Hi and welcome to the Demalak Cookery Channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make a super soft bread recipe. So as I said in this recipe, so as I said in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a super soft bread recipe. So I'm just an amateur cook, uh, not a professional baker or a professional chef. So the things that have really helped me produce really soft bread is using a mechanical means to both mix the dough and to knead the dough as well. So a, uh, a food mixer and also the hydration, getting the hydration right, which I'll discuss uh, later in the video. As usual, a full list of ingredients will be given at the end of the video. So let's have a look at those ingredients now and also the equipment that I'm going to be using today. This recipe is really easy. So the ingredients for this recipe, I've got a seven gram sachet of fast action dried yeast. So no need to pre-ferment the yeast. Teaspoon of salt, teaspoon of sugar, 300 milliliters of liquid. This is made up of 150 milliliters of cold milk and 150 milliliters of hot water, not boiling. And that'll produce a tepid uh, liquid. This is just a guide and I'll show you the reason for that uh, later. We've got 500 grams of bread flour. So this is, I think, about 13% uh, protein content within the uh, flour. So for every 100 grams, there's 13 grams of protein. And of course, in flour, the majority of the protein is gluten. So that's a nice strong flour for bread making. And I'm going to be using about three to four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. For the equipment side, we've got a food mixer with a dough hook. And again, this is the mechanical means I was talking about for mixing the dough. So the first step is to mix all of our dry ingredients to make sure that they're fully combined. So in goes the dried yeast, the sugar, and the salt. Again, just mix that up. to add in a little bit of extra virgin olive oil so as I said three to four tablespoons one two three all I'm going to do now is just mix this in by hand so now we're going to add our liquid as I said the 300 milliliters of liquid is just a guide I'm more interested in how the mixed dough reacts within the bowl depending on what speed it's on. So what I'm looking for is, as I mix in the uh, liquid and it combines together, I want to see the dough on a higher speed setting lift off from the bowl. So above the middle setting uh, on the speed dial, I want to see it lift off the bowl and come clean into a bowl, into a ball. And then below that middle speed setting, it should start to stick to the bowl itself. That way I've got a really good indication that I've got the correct hydration and this will produce a really soft uh, bread dough. So I'm starting off on speed setting number two. Just add the liquid a little bit at a time. Increase that slightly. You've got to give the liquid time to combine with the flour mix. So don't just dump all of the liquid in in one go. So I'm just going to, going to turn the mixer off so obviously you can hear me on the audio. Um, although all of the liquid is gone, the um, dough itself has lifted off the bowl. It's only on a very low setting. So this is not the correct hydration for me for this particular recipe. I need it to be slightly more hydrated. So I'm going to mix a little bit more liquid 
we're probably going to add in my estimation about 30 to about 30 to 40 extra milliliters this recipe in order to get this to the correct hydration so just adding a little bit more of that liquid It's still not sticking to the bottom of the bowl at this low speed. As you can see I'm only adding probably a tablespoon of liquid at a time. We're nearly there. Alright so we've got there now with regard to this hydration. Higher speeds which is what it's on at the moment. That dough is lifted off the bottom of the bowl. And then as we turn the speed down, instantly that dough is starting to stick to the bottom of the bowl. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this on a middle speed setting for 10 minutes and that will knead this dough perfectly. Okay, so that's the dough prepared. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the dough from the dough hook and the bowl. Put some a little bit of olive oil into the bowl, just smear that around and then we're going to uh, shape the dough. Place it back into the bowl, cover the bowl with cling film and place this bowl into a warm area of the house until the dough has doubled in size. And for me that will probably be on top of the uh, boiler. Little tip. This is quite a tacky dough now, so I'm going to place some olive oil onto my hands first before I handle the dough, otherwise it will just stick like glue. So just a quick reference of what the dough should actually look like. So when you hold the end, you know, it's almost not fluid, but a lot of elasticity in there. And even with uh, olive oil on my hands, it's still trying to stick. So as I said, we're just going to shape it already oiled the bowl, cling film over the top and then into that warm area of the house. So if you've never made bread before the reason that we cover with cling film or food wrap or cover with something is so that the dough doesn't dry out and form a skin over the top. So in all the proofing stages we always make sure that there's something covering the dough uh, to stop that from happening. Right, so this is our dough after the first proofing. Uh, it took a lot longer than I thought to double in size, so kind of imagined about 40 to 45 minutes. Actually it took just over an hour, and that's probably because the ambient temperature's quite low in the kitchen, and even above the boiler where this was placed, uh, because the central heating isn't on and nobody's used the hot water, again, uh, it's cooler than I would, would have liked. But once it's doubled in size, next thing I'm going to do, obviously take it from the bowl, a little bit of flour, not too much, just a light dusting of flour onto a work surface. Then I want to shape this. I'm going to be doing a bloomer, which is a free form loaf. So I'm just going to shape this into a bloomer shape, create a little bit of surface tension on the loaf. Uh, not really going to show how to do that because again I'm only an amateur cook. Uh, there are plenty of people a lot more uh, talented and experienced in baking, especially bread, on YouTube. Have a look at uh, their videos on how to shape free form loaves well in fact all bread um, you'll get a, a much better uh, understanding of that so once I've done that I'm then going to put it on a baking tray so let's shape it first and I'll show you the next step
So we have our free-formed loaf there. And I've got some fairly old baking trays, so they do tend to stick. So as a precaution, I'm using some uh, greaseproof paper. I've also buttered the surface very lightly, probably completely over the top for that, but I just don't want this to stick. The next thing I'm going to do, because the hydration is um, higher than normal in this particular dough, I don't want it to spread. So one thing I do is just take a couple of pieces of foil, just loosely um, scrunch those up, like this, and just place them either side. Take our blue mat into the centre, push those in. So what I'm going to do now, and again this um, this just helps the dough to uh, once it goes into the oven not to spread out too much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wet a clean tea towel, cover the uh, dough over the top, leave it out for 20 minutes just to do a, a slightly second uh, proofing, and then while it's proofing, I'm going to turn the oven on. 190 degrees centigrade preheat the oven before this will go into the center of the oven for around 25 to 30 minutes to bake so this is our bloomer loaf it's taken 35 minutes to bake in the oven the way to tell if a bread loaf is actually baked is to turn it upside down tap it if it sounds hollow it's baked next thing to do and this is really important Take it off the sheet, the baking sheet, put it onto a wire rack and leave it to cool down. If we don't do that, if we leave it on a solid surface, the underside of the bread will sweat, become soggy. And that goes for any baked goods really, bread, biscuits, cakes, that type of thing. So going onto a wire rack, let it cool down. And then because I've promised a super soft loaf, I'm going to cut into it and I'll show you just how uh, how much elasticity there is in this dough. Don't panic because when the bread comes out of the oven it will have a hard crust on the top that will soften as it cools down. So the proof of the pudding as you say. So this loaf is still warm. I've got to go out though so uh, I can't wait any longer. As it cools down it'll get a lot softer on the outside. But let's have a look what it looks like on the inside. So a really decent crumb in there, no large air pockets. With regard to the bread itself, so let's just bring it there, nice and soft, very, very soft bread. Again, this is still quite warm. Um, lots of elasticity in the bread as well. And it tastes absolutely gorgeous. So, as I said, super soft. Uh, bread recipe as you've seen there's a lot of elasticity in this particular recipe please subscribe to the channel and as usual if you've enjoyed this particular video hit that like button thank you very much for watching